So can I invite uh, Sheikh um, Haitam Tamim to come and talk to us on the topic of um, engaging and integrating. Um, uh, so please, brothers and sisters, welcome Sheikh Haitam Tamim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 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 Alaihi in our life, when we see the light and follow the light and be amongst the truthful ones. So this is a call from the Lord to all of us to respond. Whoever listened to this call, responded, is amongst the successful ones in the era. And Alhamdulillah, this is your call today, your respondent, and inshallah will be with the prophets and the righteous people in the Akhirah, in the hereafter, and the And the hadith, the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, Al Mu'min al Qawi, Khayr wa Ahabu al Allahi, in Al Mu'min al Ba'i. The strong believer is. better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer. And there's goodness in both, i.e. in the weak believer and in the strong believer. As we are now entering into a new belief, the real commitment is with our Lord, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to understand the importance of how do we strengthen our belief and our iman? I've been asked to talk about integration, but to talk about integration actually, it's not possible without talking about the identity of the Muslim who wants to integrate in his society. And we always tend to split the two, i.e., as a Muslim, what is my identity? As a British, what is my identity? And as if we have divorce between being a Muslim and being British. And in reality, there's no divorce between the two. It's a happy marriage, actually. You can be Muslim and British. But in order to do so, we need to have the right knowledge. We need to have the right understanding. And this is why from the very first verse which the Prophet Muhammad received, it was Iqra. Read or recite. And if we were to delve into this more, uh, if we want to explain what was the first word, what does it mean, the reflection of the first word which she received by the Prophet Muhammad You see, it's a command form from Allah When he says, read or recite. It's just to tell us that our religion, our faith, our belief, our Iman is strongly based on knowledge. From the very first moment, it's not coincidental that he receives Allah وسلم, the first verse ever, and it was recite. And recite is not just the literal thing. It's not just a, a form of uh, reading. It's a symbolic thing about accessing knowledge, the importance of knowledge in our life. And it shows us from day one that Islam is strongly based on knowledge. Knowledge which makes us closer to Allah, knowledge which makes us successful in our life, 
knowledge which makes us successful in the hereafter. So this is what we need first as new believers, new Muslims, as well as any Muslim who wants to excel, he needs to have the right knowledge and the right understanding. Sometimes we lack integration because we have the wrong understanding or we have misunderstanding that we have contradiction between the system which we are living uh, with and our Islam and Muslims. But when we understand the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, we see sometimes we over exaggerate things and reality is different. I'll give you an example. The Prophet وسلم, when he migrated from Mecca to Medina, and we know that Medina was the first Islamic state. He established peace between the Muslims. So at this very beginning, the establishment of the state, you have new Muslims, you have newcomers to Islam, and you have different systems around the Muslims, and within their community as well. So the Prophet ﷺ didn't say that everything which was not a revelation we need to abolish and destroy and throw away and start from zero. Never. We didn't say this. And this is sometimes a problematic thing for new Muslims that we need to start from zero from everything. It's not true. Prophet he made an assessment for his reality. And he categorized literally things into three categories. Number one, things which has no contradiction with the revelation and Sharia. He will accept and this will be Islam. Number two, things which completely contradicts the revelation and Sharia, then he will reject completely. And by the way, not many. Little, a few things were completely contradicting Sharia. And number three, things which are in between. Not contradicting Sharia fully, but it has some mistakes. If it's possible to rectify, he will, alayhi salatu wasalam, rectify it as he made in different uh, contracts in the community, sales contracts, marriage contracts, and so on. So he accepted some fully, he rejected some fully, and he, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, rectified some of these contracts and made it in line with the Sharia. And this is absolutely what we need to do. Wherever we go, this is the prophetic example. So if you want to call it integration, you want to call it something else, I don't mind. But I'm concerned about the application. Application, this is a prophetic application. Don't believe that everything is haram and we have very few halal. No, no. <coughs> Completely the opposite. We have very few haram and the rest is halal. But we need to have the right understanding and how to deal with our reality. And we might come across some people who will say, this is a kufr system and this is not into Quran and Sunnah, and though we have to reject it and this uh, kind of uh, system is not the Islamic system. I would say, we need to do the same assessment of the prophetic assessment. See what in line with the Sharia, and we can accept it, and this will be Islamic. What contradicts the Sharia, then we reject it. And what's possible to be rectified, then we do our best to rectify it, inshallah. This is one thing. The other thing, one of the very uh, uh, problematic things for new Muslims, the environment having the right companions, having the right friends, like incubator, which helps Muslims to grow their Iman and to improve the link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very crucial and very important. If we didn't have this kind of uh, facility, then we might face 
many challenges, adding to the challenge which we are taking on board, changing our direction to the right direction. So we need to choose the right companions. We need to choose the right friends, because this will help us either to go further closer to Allah Azzawajal, or going back off the tracks, God forbid. So my personal experience and advice is be careful who to choose as a friend. Colleagues, you cannot dismiss that he's your colleague, you cannot uh, fire him. But you can choose your friends. Sometimes your colleagues, it's not your choice. It's been enforced on you because it's the work environment which introduced it. No, nevertheless, uh, we need to see how we can grow the space in our hearts, in our implementation, in our uh, performance, performance, and make it the strong belief. As the Prophet said, the strong believer is better and closer and beloved to Allah than the weak believer. So if we want to be better, we want to be more beloved to Allah, then we have to strengthen our belief. And strengthening our belief comes through good companionship, good knowledge, and deep understanding. These are the crucial things to start with. At least once a week, every other week, we have to have a regular circle, a regular knowledge source we have to be attached with or uh, uh, linked with. The second thing, the Prophet said, none of you believes until he loves for people, what he loves for himself. I know probably some of you, probably some Muslims are familiar with the other narration which says, none of you believes until he loves for his brother, what he loves for people. But both are good and authentic narrations. The Prophet in this very narration, he's saying that you will never be a good believer with strong Iman and good Iman and faith unless you love for people, people regardless, uh, Muslims or non-Muslims, because the word includes all, until you love for people what you love for yourself. So we need to have this spirit of loving goodness for others. As Allah bestowed upon you this uh, favor of introducing you to Islam, then you need to have this feeling and compassion towards other, others to love for them this goodness as you love it for yourself. The third and the last point which I want to mention here is never look down at others. Because sometimes because you are a believer now, you start looking down at those who did not accept Iman or faith yet and say, I'm better than them. Shaitan, Satan will come and whisper to you and tell you, you are now a better person. Those are the hell the dwellers and this and that. This is completely wrong. Don't ever listen to these whispers. You've been there, so you want them to come to this very direction. So you have to have a very pure heart, very pure intention, and this will make you operate as a normal person, not an alien in your community. And this is how we can uh, be strong believers, be uh, righteous people, and inshallah ta'ala spread goodness as Allah stated in the Quran, and in that let them compete in goodness it means. So inshallah ta'ala, let's be uh, competitors in goodness and let's be as well the spreaders of goodness and good words, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll leave you with this.